Assalamu alaikum everyone, welcome back to another ATP video, let's hop right in. From mushrooms and bread to yeast and mold, fungi exist and are used in a variety of different forms. What makes this kingdom so special? It's estimated that over a million different species of fungi exist, many of which we haven't even discovered yet. These little creatures were the first eukaryotes to invade the earth and are the focus of today's video. While many confuse fungal species for plants, they're more closely related to animals. For instance, both are eukaryotic, meaning that they contain membrane-bound organelles. They have a true cell membrane and a true nucleus and true organelles. They also consist of a cell wall composed of chitin, beta-glucans, which are polysaccharides made of glucose monomers. And a clinical significance that's worth noting here is that the synthesis of beta-glucans is targeted by several antifungal drugs. Their cell membrane contains ergosterol, which serves the same function as cholesterol in animal cell membranes, to maintain the structure and reduce fluidity. Since the presence of ergosterol is unique to fungi, it's also the target of many antifungal drugs. There are several types of fungi. Firstly, filamentous fungi consist of small branches called hyphae that form a branching network to be collectively called mycelium. Each cell is separated by septa, but some can lack the septum. This form of fungi is also referred to as mold, which is synonymous with mycelium. This network is considered a single organism with multiple cells and is therefore considered multicellular. Molds are usually opportunistic pathogens, meaning that they can only cause an infection in immunocompromised patients. Mold antigens are one of the most frequent causes of allergies. Yeast, on the other hand, are unicellular spherical structures budding off each other, almost like taking a small piece of dough and pinching little smaller balls out of it. Yeasts, like molds, are also opportunistic pathogens. They can infect the skin, mucous membranes, and internal organs. Another unique group of fungi are the dermatophytes, which are pathogenic fungi that infect keratinous tissue and are able to invade the hair, skin, and nails of a living host. Moving on to the types of reproduction, yeasts reproduce asexually through budding, a process by which a bud breaks off the parent organism and grows to form a new one. Molds, on the other hand, can reproduce sexually or asexually. However, the most common way is asexually through formation of spores. Fungal spores are different than bacterial endospores and serve a different purpose, which is reproduction. These spores are microscopic particles that can be transpired by the wind and water to various different locations to produce more fungi. Inhaling these fungal spores can cause serious infections like pneumonitis. Now for the structure and shape. Monomorphic fungi exist as only one form throughout their lifespan, either mold or yeast. Dimorphic fungi, on the other hand, can exist in both forms, di for two. The form is usually determined by environmental conditions. Remember, mold in the cold, yeast in the heat. Kinda rhymes. Or think about how in cold weather, living beings tend to come closer and vice versa in hot weathers. In other words, dimorphic fungi exist as molds at cooler temperatures and as yeasts at warmer temperatures. That's why, once in a host cell, the fungus takes the form of yeast due to the high body temperature. As a result, most samples taken from the host to be examined will reveal yeasts and not mold. Fungi are used in so many ways. We will mention just a few. Fungi are important nutrient and carbon cyclers. They break down organic matter and dead tissue, releasing carbon, oxygen, and nitrogen. In other words, they are important decomposers. They're also used in the food industry to make bread, beer, and blue cheese. Also, penicillin, an important antibiotic you've probably heard enough about in your biology textbooks or in ATP videos, is also obtained from fungi. Now to wrap things up, let's go over everything we mentioned so far. Fungi are eukaryotic organisms with a cell wall that has chitin and beta-glucan. Fungi also have an ergosterol containing cell membrane. 
Fungi have different forms, including the multicellular filamentous fungi, which consists of the mycelium network, also referred to as mold, or the unicellular yeasts and the pathogenic dermatophytes. Yeasts reproduce asexually through budding, while molds mainly reproduce via spores. We also mentioned that fungi can either exist in one form throughout its lifespan, which is known as monomorphic fungi, or take multiple forms throughout their lifespan, and this is known as dimorphic. And that's it for today. We hope you found it beneficial. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to receive our latest updates. And as always, thanks for watching.